Okay, first off, let's say good morning to all your friends at home right now. Good morning. <laughs> say hi to your friends. If you got some people out there you want to say hi to, go ahead. Let's leave the mics on for a sec, and let's have a conversation about this one. And let's see what the people at home said <coughs> first. Let's go back to this problem and see if we can understand how to do the full kinematics. You guys can turn your mics off so you can chat again. And feel free to talk over there on that side of the glass. Nobody's going to hear you. The only mic is right here now. So if you guys want to talk to each other, go ahead. All right. How do we do this banked curve problem? We kind of set it up last time, but let's go through it in a little more full detail. So here's your banked curve. This is the sort of side view or the, the end view. Our car is right here. There's the wheels, here's the headlights, here's the top of the car. Okay, and this thing is coming towards you like that. Which means it's going around a radius R like so. Okay, this is the car on the bank curve going around like that. Let's see if we can figure out what the relationship is between the V, between the theta, between the R. How do we do that? All right, first off, we got a picture. Not the best picture ever, but you guys get the point. We go to the free body diagram. What forces are acting on the car? Gravity. What other forces are acting on the car? Normal force. Anything else? Okay. You guys just pictured it as that, static friction. So let's try an experiment. Let's say that you are driving on ice, such that there is no friction anymore. If there's no friction, all we have to do is erase that. So the only thing left are those two forces. Mg down, normal force up at an angle. All right, that looks pretty good, except nothing is orthogonal here, and we would really like to have orthogonal forces. So let's redraw it. Mg is down, that seems okay. But how do I break up N into components? I know that there's some component of N to the right, there's some component of N going up, but I don't know which is which. We know that it's got to be related to theta somehow. So it's either N sine theta, here, and n cosine theta there, or it's flipped. So how do we figure out which is which? You can go through a little proof and use a little bit of trig and figure it out, or you can just look at the limits. So let theta go to zero degrees. If theta goes to zero degrees, it's now a flat surface. My car would be right on top of that flat surface. And the normal force on this car going up would just be equal to what? mg. Okay. We know there's still going to be a normal force holding the car up. We know it has to be equal to mg. We need our normal force to not go away if 
theta goes to 0. So which of these is 0, and which of them is 1? What's sine of 0? 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. So do I have this right, or do I have to switch it? We have to switch. Okay. So we switch it. And so we redraw this as mg down, n sine theta to the right, n cosine theta going up. This is now the correct free body diagram once you break it into components. All right, so this is actually one of the hard parts of the problem, is just getting that right. Okay, now that we have that right, what do we do next? We got our picture, we got our free body diagram. Now we go to Newton's second law. And Newton's second in circular motion says sum of the forces in the radial direction equals mv squared over r. There's only one force in the radial direction, it's n sine theta. So we get n sine theta equals mv squared divided by the radius, which we said was r. We have vertical forces here that we need to worry about. And so the forces in the y direction have to add up to m times the acceleration in the y direction. We have n cosine theta going up. We have mg going down, and all of that is equal to what? Zero. There's no acceleration in the y direction. This car is going around in a horizontal circle. It's not going up or down. And so we get n cosine theta equals mg. So let's say that we want to solve for theta. Okay, how do we solve this thing for theta? Well, we've got equation A right there. We've got equation B right there. If I write equation A over here, we said it is n sine theta equals mv squared over r. If I write equation b, I get n cosine theta equals mg. And now here's the cool trick. If I have two equations, I can divide equation 1 by equation 2. And so the whole thing becomes n sine theta over n cosine theta equals mv squared over r divided by mg. Anytime you have two equations, you can always divide those equations. The reason you do that, of course, is n drops out. The whole left side just becomes tangent theta m drops out over here, and we get v squared over g times r. So if you're trying to figure out what angle theta, you can use this equation, right? If you know this other stuff, you just take the arc tangent and you're done. So let's try this for a real setup. And let's just make up some numbers that we think are reasonable. Let's say this is a freeway off-ramp. Okay, we know that freeway off-ramps are banked, right? When you get off the freeway, they're banked. What is a typical speed that you might see on a freeway off-ramp? 45 miles per hour, okay? 45 miles per hour, 
which is approximately 20 meters per second. Okay? It's roughly a factor of two, so it's probably a little bit off, but then let's just say that's a good number. Okay? What is the radius of curvature of that off ramp in meters? Any thoughts? Is it five meters? Is it 500 meters? Five meters sounds way too small, right? That's only 15 feet. 500 meters, that's like five football fields. That sounds way too long too. So somewhere maybe, I don't know, 50 meters? Does that sound good? 50 meters in radius? Perfect. Okay, we're just taking some guesses from our everyday life. Okay, we know G, of course, that's 9.8. So let's calculate what theta is. Tangent of theta, so we need to take the arc tangent, and if we take the arc tangent of V squared, which we said was 20 squared, and we're gonna divide by G, 9.8, and R, we said, was 50. And why don't you guys punch that into your calculator and tell me what you get. We've got the arc tangent of 20 squared, which is 400. And in the bottom, we have 50 times 9.8, which is pretty close to 500, right? It's 490 or something. What do you guys get? Thirty-nine degrees. Okay. What is what is this number now? This number is theta. How steep do you need to make that bank? Right? So, why do you care? <coughs> Some of you guys are engineers in here, right? Probably a lot of you guys are engineers in here. Why do you care about this number? Okay, hit your mic and let's, let's hear that one again. If it's snowing, you don't want to slide off the road, okay? When you drive on the freeway and you see that exit sign that says 45 miles per hour, and you notice, oh, that road is banked pretty steeply, it's because somebody went through these calculations to figure out how steep they should bank that curve such that you don't require any friction to get around the curve. In other words, if it's snowing or if it's icy, you can still make the turn, okay? No friction, no problem. Anybody driven on black ice before? So black ice, which I first discovered in Oregon when I was in grad school, is when it rains and it hits the pavement and the pavement is really cold and so it immediately turns to ice and it makes this like invisible thin layer of ice and that's why they call it black ice because you're actually just looking directly through it at the pavement. So you can't even see it and it's like nearly frictionless. You know, you hit this stuff and you have no friction between your tires and the road anymore. And I remember like driving along in my four wheel drive truck, it doesn't matter if all four wheels are going, if there's no friction between you and the road, there's nothing you can do. And people are just like, Ooh, just doing like these slow motion slides, you know, off the road. So the idea for you engineers is if you're gonna build that freeway off ramp and you wanna know how steep to make it, go through this calculation 
knowing that it has to be the right angle such that if there's no friction at all, somebody could still make the turn. Now, nobody ever does this, right? Nobody ever actually takes the exit at 45 miles per hour, right? You guys are heading down the freeway at 80 and you're like, woo, going on the off ramp, okay. Try it sometime. Go on the off-ramp and actually go at the speed that's posted. Every off-ramp, it says, exit 45 miles per hour. If you actually go at that speed, your car nearly steers itself around the curve. You don't have to crank your wheel to the right or crank your wheel to the left. It just goes around the curve almost naturally. It's kind of a cool experiment. Try it out. You guys are, you know, scientists now. Go do it. Everybody behind you is going to honk like crazy. Just ignore them. Focus on the steering of your car, all right? It's a fun little experiment.